I have to bring it up because it, it's brought up in, in every interview, isn't it? And you smile and you know what I'm about to yeah. say. It's the suit, it's the Spice yeah. Boys thing. How yeah. do you how do you look back on that now? Because had you won that, you know, the final in '96 against Manchester United, people wouldn't even talk about the suits, would they? They wouldn't even talk about the the personality. I think they still. I think they still would have spoke about those suits. <laughs> I mean, it was just. I think it just put a bit of pressure on us, didn't it? I think we knew that. Uh, you know, wearing them, you know, there was a lot of pressure, and if we'd have got beat, you know, this Spice Boy thing would have you know, come up like it did. Um, but I mean, I, we we just didn't didn't really see the suits. I don't. I think it was only maybe a, a week before or something like that. Uh, I think we just left it up to David James. He was uh, uh, a model for Armani at the time, and I obviously had some contacts, and uh, we just sort of left it up to him and. Uh, until they actually the suits got delivered or whatever a week before we didn't know what what they were like so as you can imagine there was a few uh shocks on the lads faces um when we got those suits i mean they look all right on jmo but a few of us didn't look the best on <laughs> was that realization at the time this was a bad idea i mean did, did anybody think the suits were, were good for example did anyone think that they look smart yeah, on i think david james yeah i think he was probably <laughs> the only one that could pull it off but uh but i mean obviously on the day of the game you know, the, the the suits really weren't going through our minds. I think you know we, you know the the, the FA Cup final against Man United wasn't the best game anyway, uh, and I think one goal was going to mm. win it. But obviously, if we'd have got the goal, uh, hopefully people wouldn't have been you know talking about the suits and and the Spice Boys. What was the feeling like though, having lost it again? It's it's schoolboy's own dream. You'd done it before. You'd, you'd won it, but to lose it must have been a, an incredibly painful feeling. Yeah, that was a that was a. Uh, I can always remember that feeling. It, was, it felt down and. I can always remember we we were on the open top bus and it just didn't make sense to me that you know mm. going on the round Liverpool on the open top bus I know it was like to thank the fans uh, you know for coming up but you just, you just felt you were really really down and you didn't, just didn't feel like celebrating um, so you know but you know that's, that's football for you you know you can have to you have the ups and downs in football don't you and that's obviously a down. The injuries were soon to, to return again, and I think at that point you'd spent something like nine months out injured, you'd had three hospital visits, you'd had a really painful time with wisdom teeth as well, which was was, was a bizarre one, but was the realisation then that the injuries are starting to take hold again? I think they always had, I'd always, even though, I mean, but, you know, every foot, most footballers have injuries, you, know, you can ask Michael Owen now, for example, you know, he, you can see he's been suffering for years with, with injuries, seems to be the same one. Uh, and I know we've got to deal with it. Um, it's just hard dealing it, but dealing with it. Being in the treatment room uh, constantly when all the lads are out training is a real downer. And that's the other side of football is when you're going home, uh, you know, with a face on you, going home to your wife, and it, it, you know, you get depressed, you get down because, mm. you know, you pay to be a footballer. You want to be out there training, so uh, you know, you just wish that you know. You never got any injuries, but obviously, if you're a professional footballer, you're going to get injuries. I probably had more than uh, the average uh, footballer, and uh, it ended up finishing me off. But Jared Hulier had, had taken over then, and, and you had quite an emotional meeting with you, didn't? You? Because at that point, Liverpool had offered you a, a contract, a, yeah. a good contract, but you felt that maybe perhaps you, you deserved a little bit more money for it. But then, when Jared Hulier came in, the situation was completely different. Yeah, the contract that was offered, I just wanted to prove to myself that I was worth, you know, uh, more than that. I just wanted to prove to Liverpool because I understand, you know, that the sort of, uh, you know, it was good even getting offered one because, um, you know, that sort of stood behind me through my injuries. Uh, but yeah, then when uh, Gerard Houllier came in with the Roy Evans, that was a bit of a uh, sort of a weird one. Um, but I, I understand what Gerard w was on about. Um, you know, say with my injuries. I mean, he he obviously wanted me uh, as a player. He wanted his own players, but he wanted me to see what I was like. But I could never give him that because mm. I always seemed to be in the the treatment room with my my knee. It was giving me so much so many problems. But he kind of intimated that the injuries were all in your mind, and it wasn't a physical problem. It was a mental one. I think what he was trying to say, yeah, because he came into the uh, the changing rooms, and you know, he he said, you know, how long and. Me and the doctor had said, you know, possibly about seven, to, seven to ten days, because I'd rushed back before you see, and broke down. Uh, so it, I really wanted to make sure that I was right this time, and he just said that, you know, he wanted me out there, and he he sort of was inclined to say that he thought that it was probably up there now when I was getting sort of stuck in the stuck in the uh, treatment room, 
you know, and I was trying to explain to him that it wasn't that. It was just I wanted to make sure this time that when I come out to mm. to train with the first team that I'm I'm coming out and I'm not going to break down again. Uh, but he disagreed and he thought that I should just come out and you know give it a go. He wanted to see what I was like, so uh, yeah, I went out and 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 give it a go. Yeah. And you know, and I didn't break down straight away. You know, it was just. Uh, I can't remember how many days later, but uh, just what wasn't right. Maybe if I had the extra ten days, you know, I, I probably would have broke down again because even though I had the other operations, my knee never got uh, right. But yeah, I understand when a new manager comes in, you know, they want to either buy the buy new players, don't they, and get rid of the old or um, the ones that are injured, get out so we can so I can prove to them that I'm, I'm worth keeping. There's a really emotional chapter, I think, in, in the book when you talk about playing for the reserves in the early part of 1999 at St Helens, and mm. you know nobody was more desperate to get back fit and playing than you, um, and you just realised in the game that, that things weren't right. Sammy Lee's barking at you from the touchline, mm. and and you just can't do it anymore. I can remember that game clearly. I mean. Uh, you know, it's a weird feeling because your whole body's fit. You know, you're raring to go. You know, you, you know, you're seeing the way the game's played, and you know, every time you sort of, I'm turning on my left knee, uh, it was giving way. Even when I was, you know, sprinting, I was sort of limping as I was sprinting because the pain was just, it was just constantly sort of pulling on my knee. And you can't play well. You know, you can try and blank it out your mind, but that can only happen for so mm -hmm. long. You know, and I can remember pulling out of a couple of tackles or not, you know, defending very well, and Sammy Lee. You know, shouting at me, which I understand because obviously, he, you know, he thought I was fine. And then I ended up coming off in that reserve game, and uh, you know, obviously, I had a good feeling then that, um, you know, I think I'd had uh, possibly three operations by that time, and it was coming up. This was towards the very end of the season as well, and I just knew that this just wasn't going the way I, th you know, I was hoping. Uh, it just wasn't getting better. I got back on the coach, and I was very, very down. I rang my wife and. As soon as she picked up the phone, I just again <laughs> started crying because uh, I just felt that this wasn't right. But then I put the phone down, and she rang Stephen Manaman, who, who was at home, and uh, you know he was he was good enough to give me a call, and uh, you know even just to hear his voice and, and sort of you know, tell me I've, I was going to be all right, you know, mm -hmm. even though I sort of knew, um, you know, it, it was just nice to hear his voice um, and take it from there, really. So now you had. A realization in your mind that that the the, the end of, of your time at Liverpool was fast approaching, but you still in your in your mind wanted to prove to another club perhaps that that you had what it took to to take your career on to, to the next chapter really. But again, another emotional part in in the book is when you drive away from Melwood for that final time. The realization mm -hmm. that this adventure the club I'd supported as a boy and I'd represented was was about to end. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I think all the players had been away, had gone away on holiday and the season had finished, but obviously I'd stayed there a little bit longer just doing extra training and trying to strengthen my knee and stuff like that. And I knew I was leaving Liverpool, but then, yeah, it was just, you know, a, a, sort of a weird feeling of, you know, saying bye to the, the ladies who were, you know, doing the cooking there and that. Uh, and then the security fellow on the gate, so that was all that was there, and yeah. uh, jumped in the car and had one little look round, and, and that was it. And it was literally it, literally it. You know, you go, you go home, and then uh, you know, well, you you know, your time at Liverpool then is finished. Because in your mind, you're probably thinking all oh, the lads will be there. You know, there'll be pats mm. on the back. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that, but actually, it was a, a window into football, wasn't it? That just happens. Yeah. Players move on, players retire. It's just one of those things. Exactly, of course it is. And uh, you know, if I'd have been at another club, I, it probably wouldn't have bothered me at all. But mm. because you know, I, uh, I, I love Liverpool and I, I, you know, been there for so long. Uh, yeah, it was. You know, I wasn't expecting all the patting on the back, but it was just. Uh, it was a sad, ta sad moment for me to leave. Uh, but then I knew that I had to, you know, try and get this knee right for to go to West Ham to see how I could do in pre-season. But really, you know, when I look back now, I knew that this it wasn't going to work. But Harry had given me the opportunity to, uh, you know, come and prove my fitness. But from day one, when I started training with West Ham, my knee was swollen like a balloon, and mm. uh, you know, I was doing all the pre-season running, but literally gritting my teeth, just thinking, well, this is my last opportunity anyway. I may as well. You know, if my knee snaps in half, it doesn't really matter because this is my last chance to be a professional footballer. He spotted it though, didn't he? He said you were running with a limp. You realise you're running with a limp. Or what did you say back to him then? Yeah, well, we were playing a, a reserve game. I forget who it was against, and uh, you know, I, I played the whole game. But he said, he says, "How's your knee?" And I said, "Oh, it's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it." And it was 
the physio looked at it and it was like a like a big balloon it was just so swollen I said oh it's fine I was just putting some ice on it he says well you're limping as you're running and I was just yeah well that's just the uh, that's just the way I run <laughs> <laughs> you know and I was rich because I, I knew that I didn't want to didn't want anyone to know that I was really struggling with it because as I said before I knew this was me my last opportunity the support at that stage because it's not just that the contract's not going to happen for me at West Ham that was the realisation that I'm not going to be able to carry on. I'm going to have to re retire. I think you went to see a, a specialist in Southampton that, that confirmed those worst fears, though, didn't he? That's right. Yeah, I'd seen him before, and Do Dr. Barrett was he was great. Uh, he'd uh, he'd done a lot of research on the patella tendon, and he'd been over to America and dealt with the basketball players over there because a lot of basketball players get this similar mm -hmm. injury. Uh, so he'd operated on me before, and uh, he he was probably the closest that you know that got there. He shaved a bit of my uh, kneecap off because. He thought that was possibly rubbing over the patella tendon, which is obviously irritating it all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I went to see him uh, ag again, obviously, because um, I broke down at West Ham and Harry said, listen, you better go go back to your surgeon who you know uh, instead of using one of ours and just see what he has to say. And uh, he, he looked at it and he said, well, to be honest, Rob, that, that is it. You know, there's nothing else we can do with that. You know, I can't take any more of your kneecap off. I can't you know, make the, the tendon any stronger, but we've tried everything from uh, rehabilitation, uh, you know, and I can do one more operation on it, but it'll just, you know, sort of give it a clean out really. Mm. Uh, and that was the first time that obviously he'd, he'd said, you know, there's nothing else I can do. People will look back and, and say the obvious things about, you know, Rob Jones, and he could have been this, he could have been that, but you were, you know, you, you mm. played over 200 games for Liverpool, you represented your country, you realised the dream that, that very few people ever have in their life. Is that the, the kind of thing you look back on as opposed to what if, what if? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the majority of this interview, hasn't it, has been injuries yeah. and, and stuff like that. And, you know, and I hate talking about them because I like to look uh, at the thing, the positive things that happened. And, from that day when I got the chance, you know, from crew to Liverpool, and you know, if it if it had just stopped a week after that, yeah. you know, I played against Manchester United live on telly, I'd have been happy. But you know, I got more than that. I got to play for my country and you know, sing the national anthem at Wembley um, with my mum and dad and that watching. So yeah, you know, I did some great things in football. But again, you know, there's a, there's ups and downs with football or sport, and the injuries played a big part in my career. What's the strongest, happiest memory, aside from the obvious, the, the debut for, for Liverpool and signing, playing in, in cup finals as well? Is there another memory that, that you can't fail to look back on and not smile or laugh your head off about? No. The, the, the best memory for me is that day of turning up at Anfield uh, with Graeme Sooners and Tom Saunders and Kenny Swain and uh, signing that contract and training with the, the first team on that day. It was like literally a dream come true. And then obviously playing that game on the Sunday. I always say that they say what what was the your best game for Liverpool, and that was my my best game. I was just you know the debut for Liverpool. I just you know enjoyed so much. Football left you behind, but it wasn't long before you were, you were thinking up the, the next step. And, and your wife has been key throughout the book, and she's a, a very strong theme in there. Had come up with a plan as to maybe what you could get uh, into together. Yeah, well, um, obviously finishing so early, you know, we sat down and it was like, well, what do you do? What are we going to do with ourselves now? But my wife's always, always been interested in childcare, so uh, she ended up going back to college and uh, learning a bit more about childcare. I went around the Warrington area looking for a uh, property that was suitable. We opened and up open four, then went into uh, care homes as well that we have around uh, the Northwich area. And uh, it, it took off and it's, it's gone really well. Were your hands on? Or were you cutting the fruit up and yeah. making the sandwiches? And <laughs> At all the that? start, I mean, I've done a bit of cooking in my time yeah. there just to, to cover for the chef and things like that. And I was a little bit at the start. I mean, now I mainly just, um, you know, we've opened uh, over in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we've got a couple of nurseries over in Abu Dhabi. And if I go over there, I'll go and look at the properties with them and just uh, check really if they're suitable. But I don't go there feeding the babies uh, <laughs> every day, if that's what you mean. Would you ever see yourself getting back in? Would you be a coach or a manager, do you think, in the future? Or No, I, don't th I just don't think it's me at all. That, uh, I'll leave that to the uh, the ones that really want to do it and the experts. But the business over in Abu Dhabi and uh, and Dubai has, has took off you know loads so um, it's, it'd be finding the time to, to get back into football at all. Just finally Rob people will, will obviously reference the, the injuries but how would you like and how do you think Liverpool fans will remember you when they look back on, on your career? 
I think if you ever speak to them, definitely the scoring is always brought up, isn't it? And, you know, a lot also talk about my debut. The fans could probably relate to one day uh, sitting there watching Liverpool and next minute they get a phone call asking, you know, to come and train and then come and play for Liverpool. I mean, I think the fans could probably relate to that and just know that it was a dream come true for me. 